Hi, great to see you. Come on in. I'm looking forward to doing this. Great to see my subscribers back again. Really appreciate uh, your interest and your loyalty. Thank you also to those of you who have um, had and booked a personal one-on-one face-to-face -on -one -face reading with me over FaceTime and Skype and for recommending me to your friends who've also booked. I do appreciate it. Uh, and if you're interested in having a one-on-one -on -one psychic reading, just have a look in the description box below and that will give you some information. Now let's get the tarot section underway. I'm also going to use at the end of the tarot section, I'm going to talk about three playing cards. Now you might let me know in the comments section whether you like the addition of the playing cards at the end or not. Uh, when I do psychic readings, these are very, very incisive. They're like a, a surgeon's scalpel in determining what's going to happen in your future. So we shall see, but of course this is a general reading, but it'll still have, it'll still have an overall message for you. But anyway, let's get the tarot section underway first, shall we? And see what there is to be had. Now, here we go. What's this first one? Wow, the Ace of Wands. Great for you. King of Coins. Gemini, the Ace of Wands and the King of Coins. And the Two of Cups. Beautiful, beautiful. I will use that pen of mine to point out some of the imagery because it does affect, for me, it evokes uh, certain messages, I suppose, and energy that comes through, which will be appropriate to you during the month of March. There is the Queen of Swords. Now that does not surprise me to see that with you. I just see a lot of you in that. And let's have a look here, shall we? Get something underway. What's this one? What is that? Oh, the Seven of Wands. It's a very striking looking card. Very interesting, very interesting artwork, as you will see when you come round and have a close look at these cards with me while I do the reading. So you get to see in detail the, the, um, the cards themselves. Now here are these playing cards I spoke of. There's the Queen of Clubs. What's this? There's the Queen of Hearts. Well, that is interesting, isn't it? What's well, going to come with it? There's the King of Spades. Well, you have three court cards there. Very interesting. All right, as I say, let's get these things together and let's get this reading underway. Okay, Gemini, let's have a look at these, shall we? And go first to this card, which you drew right from the starter's pistol. It is the Ace of Fire. There is going to be... Now, the people who are going to be interesting to you, I think, during this period are... Yeah, I think uh, I think a Leo is going to be interesting to you during this period. I think also perhaps a, a Cancer. Mm, who else might it be? I think it could well be a... Well, I think maybe a... Uh, a Virgo. Yeah, I think a Virgo. They're the, the type of energy that I'm getting up from it as we speak. Anyway, I think this card speaks to you of a great new opportunity opening up for you. There is an, op an opportunity coming through for you now. It's at the ace. It hasn't yet turned into your will to make the thing happen. It's not yet turned into your will. But what it's saying to you is that you do have the power to make things happen. Remember that there is nothing you cannot be, there is nothing you cannot do, there is nothing you cannot have. You are the most magnificent, the most remarkable, the most splendid being God has ever created. For who could reject such wondrous magnificence? But you do not know who you are, and you think you are a great deal less. You are your own rule maker, and you are the only one who can assess how you are doing. All you see in the world is your idea about it. Life will take off for you when you choose for it to. An idea becomes a thought, 
A thought becomes a word. Say it out loud. Words have power and reverberate all throughout eternity. A word becomes an action. And if you are going to do it, start. And when you start, go all the way. Do it. Do it. Seize the opportunity. Rejoice in it. And let no power on earth take it from you. This is very much the imagery that's coming through. Let's have a look at this card here, the Queen of Swords. She's sitting underneath that ace. What does she have to say? Let's have a look at her. Well, the Queen of Swords, if we do have a look at her, she is um, she's holding in her right hand, rather ungainly so, a sword, isn't she? And she has long spindly fingers which is which are her arms are covered by netting as is her hair her, her, her hair her crown i suppose on top of her head there are two crescent moons sitting on her throne now beneath the throne itself there are i don't know if you can see it here there's one two witches flying on broomsticks she has a raven at her left foot. You can see its spindly claws there. And here are what look like Klu, Ku Klux Klan members. A couple of black horses carrying, pulling with it. I'm getting a sort of a carriage that in the olden days would have carried the body. That is a funeral carriage is what I'm getting. All in all, she seems to present something of a stark picture to us. Her face is very aristocratic, well-formed, rather attractive in a sort of a way, haughty, I would say, and almost as if she's looking down on people. But nevertheless, what does she have to say to you? Is she someone around you? Yeah, possibly a Libra. She could well also be a Virgo. Now, I've got this Virgo up here as well. So I'm getting very much a strength of Virgo around here. Um, I see her really being uh, Virgo and Libra. Why am I getting Libra? Well, because I think that her association with Libra really connects her to the card of, um, what would you call it, justice or adjustment in some decks. She is the queen of the thrones of air. This, uh, this is all about, for you, making clear decisions based on fact and fairness, which, notwithstanding the somewhat foreboding presence that she makes in this card, I think is what the Queen is about herself. She actually is one of fact and fairness. In fact, I get the feeling that the way she's come out the way she has here is because she's had trial by fire over many years and it sort of affected her internally but still within her does burn the fires of fact and fairness she is a woman although court cards can be the other gender who is graceful very perceptive a keen observer a subtle interpreter an intense individualist confident and gracious is what i get with her now i'll say this also that the <sighs> This is saying that you need to use your intellect in an unbiased, uh, to make an unbiased decision about a situation. Now, compassion and empathy may distract you, so you must go with your head and not with your heart. It is not a time to beat around the bush about a situation. Rather, it is a time for you to decide and then to act and cut through old patterns and masks and have the courage of your convictions to move forward. I'd have this thought in mind, and it is that my only duty in life is to remain true to myself. Yeah. Very much uh, that is the case uh, with you. I think also observe yourself in different roles. Some you will continue to play, but now with more awareness, and you will play them until you no longer 
identify yourself with them is what I am getting. I'm going to go over here to the Seven of Wands. Here's the Ace. Here's the Seven. Let's have a look at the Seven. Okay, the Seven of Wands. Well, here we have a picture of a of a speaker, almost like you get in parks, like Hyde Park in London, or probably elsewhere in the world as well. We have an agitated speaker in red, standing from a platform of seven, well, um, logs, but which symbolise wands, of course. And he is um, pointing um, with his left hand at someone, and with his right hand he is making the victory signal. Now, the man in green to the left seems to have no interest at all in what the man is saying at all. There's a young man holding what looks like a racket, athletic sort of a character that's got keen interest. There is a figure in black here who is quite despairing, probably despairing anyway. This woman here is obviously someone who's well-dressed and she's handing money out to this character that's here, dressed in the lilac or purple, as it may be. Well, what does this mean? Um, this seven is... The seven is a number which, in mystical terms for me, is associated with the planet of... Venus. Venus very much is a case of relationship. It can be the case of love. It's a case of beautifying, of harmonizing things. Sometimes it can also be the case of um, Venus brings money with her as well and helps with standard of living. But the astrology of it for me is Mars in the third decan of Leo. Now, I'll pull out now that we've seen it. Here we go. Now, Mars in Leo. Well, the third decan of Leo, the 13th to the 22nd of August, that type of thing. And this seven is associated with Venus. So we have a Venus ruling the card, if you like. And the astrology of the card is Mars in Leo. Well, the, the feminine energy of Venus, I think, further dilutes the energy of fire, which has come quite some way away from this ace. And combined with the often one-pointed, aggressive, fiery nature of Mars, I think what happens is that uh, we don't get any harmony. And the other thing is this, is that the feminine energy of Venus just does not sit well with the very masculine energy of Mars. However, you may find a situation during the period, and I'm looking at these figures that are here, some are disinterested, some very interested, some despairing, some or here's something which has come out of nowhere, this is great, I've got something, what's here, and yet someone who wants to push things forward. I think what you might find is that it is your Mars energy which is pretty much all that is keeping you going. And it's almost as if you feel that you are fighting a losing battle about something. Or almost as if you are on a sinking ship. That is that you've got mixed feelings just in the same way that these people here have got mixed feelings is what I'm getting. So you, it may be that you haven't been dealt the best hand. I mean, these clubs are very, very stark and, and, and oppressive looking, I think. Because it might be that, that to you it seems that even things that are going on in the background don't seem to be going well. And I'm getting that because of these changing colours that are going on these leaves. Now, this can sometimes relate to relationship problems where you're running out of energy and ideas as to how to keep sustaining it. Or it can relate to work matters where you're coming to the end of your, end of your tether about something. However, I've, I've got to tell you that really, you know, I call this card the Lord of Valor. And the other thing that I'll, I'll mention is this, is that valor, it's very often just strength, strength of character. 
even in the midst of indecision perhaps, or sometimes feeling hopeless, sometimes feeling excited about something, sometimes less so. This number seven refers to an area of divine emanation prior to the emergence of space and time from out of spirit, which we mystics, in a nutshell, refer to as victory. So it is the case that though you do feel, though, there may well be something coming up, I think, where you do feel as if you're on a sinking ship and therefore wanting to give up, or you may feel diffident about the thing. Yet nevertheless, the surprising thing is that your valour brings you what you least expected, but this gold coin comes from the purse of the woman standing next to this character. And what happens is that you do overcome. Your valour, your strength does overcome. And so it's actually a good card. It's saying, don't be surprised if something like this comes up, but don't be afraid if it does, because you will prevail. I'm going to leave this to last, uh, well, second last, and then I'll do these things on the side here. And here we have the, the king of coins. Well, the king of coins here is um, sitting on a rather sturdy throne, is he not? Um, he's an old guy, white hair, white beard, so it shows that he's old. He's got a cloak around him, which is, oh, it's pretty well um, embroidered, I think, with, with, with thorns and branches and things like that. In this hand here, he's holding a compass, not one for telling north and south, but one that you'd use uh, for drawing things, which you might use as an astrologer. In this hand is the, I mean, it may be difficult for you to make it out, but it's actually a bird. It's the phoenix bird, which is, represents resurrection and renewal. He has um, at his feet seven one, two, three, four, five, is it? One, two, three, four, five, yeah, seven baskets. This one holds diamonds. There are gold rings. There are gold crowns. There are crystals. There are pearls. There are gold coins. And there are gold bars. And behind him are the well-maintained fields of a kingdom which is in good repair and in good shape. So what's this have to say for you? Well, first of all, does it mean it could be anybody that's in your life? Well, look, it could be. It could be a Virgo. It could be a Leo. These court cards are male and female, as I say. Leo and Virgo is what I'm getting here. And the reason why I'm getting Leo and Virgo, I'll tell you why I'm really getting Leo and Virgo here. The first two decans of Virgo, that is 0 to 10 degrees and 10 degrees to 20 degrees in the sign of Virgo, they are ruled, the first 10 degrees is ruled by the sun and the second 10 degrees, the second decanate of Virgo is ruled by Venus. Now, the sun is required for the growth of all these fields and crops and the nurturing qualities of Venus only complement that energy and complement what this king stands for. Now, I think that this could, if it's a person, as I say, it could well be uh, a man on the land or to do with real estate. Um, real estate in any form could be buying, selling, developing, working on, working on highways, infrastructure projects, uh, farming, ranching, um, processing, very much to do with uh, the land. I think it's a period here where you will be a hard worker and actually quite patient and clever. Um, I've got to say that I, I really am getting the feeling, only because he is so materially directed, that I think that um, material things are going to be important to you during this period. Um, the character of this guy that I'm getting is that it's very complex. Um, at best, I think he can be really romantic and imaginative, but he really does have a massive ambition. And he can be quite superstitious. And there is uh, some ability for him to waste time in idle dreaming, I suppose you could say. Um, I'm very much getting this... Uh 
This card here, I very much get this as making as being part of his makeup as well. Um, I'm very much getting that seven of wands in him um, because I, I think I think that's where his work ethic comes from. You know, he he persists against long odds. So I'm getting that. I'm also getting that he's he's um, very. Uh, he has a very good work commitment over a longer period of time. And so that also is helped by this Seven of Wands. And I think that's what you are going to have. You'll be, you, you will have the ability to dig deep and to overcome things. Um, and, and, and I think that you'll be very good at practical things during this period. Um, now, I also said there that I, I actually kind of get Venus in the second decan of Virgo with him. Well, I think what this means is that Venus, which brings, which is good for money, and Virgo, which is good for detail and hard work, I think it's saying that there's good fortune on your side, plus valor and prudence, you know, which put together really mean that success is going to come. So I think you'll be quite instinctive the way you go about things. You'll have a good work ethic, which brings results over the longer term. Now, you've got no air cards present here. So what I'm thinking is that you're, you're not going to, which is interesting for you, but I don't think you should over-intellectualize things during this period of March. Rather, just use your work ethic to get things by. Just be practical, be focused, and turn down the, um, the ideas factory side of you, if you know what I mean. And I mean that with respect. Um, now's the time, I think, to, to just look at the page ahead of you or look at the screen in front of you and just, just go through it. Um, be careful, though, that you you do keep a balance. You're going to be very successful with, with work products, whether that's in the home or outside the home. And just to make sure that you do keep a balance though, won't you? Um, because I, sometimes I get the feeling of workaholism around this and I'm getting that now. So just be careful of that. Work smart, not hard. Here we have the two of the two of water. Well, here we have uh, a young uh, man and a young woman, um, although of course it could just as easily apply um, with the necessary changes being made for those in the lesbian and gay community, of course. This, this shows, I think, really well, let's look at the, the thing. First of all, we see a young man and a young woman in looking lovingly at one another. There are two giant uh, cups behind them, aren't there? The one on the left-hand side is silver, and the it is on the base of the silver cup are twin snakes holding it up. Now, you may be able to make it out, and let me just point it out for you. Here is a young woman who's turning away weeping, and here is a young man that's storming off with his love letters in his hand, carrying his love letters with him. This silver color in Western esoteric tradition relates to the female principle. Now here in the right hand cup, with a lion and its tail forming the base of it, we have well, what can only be classed as scenes of great debauchery with a satyr and a nymph. And, and gold is classified in Western esoteric tradition as the masculine principle. The Lord of Love is what I call it. It's Venus in the first decan of Cancer. 21st of June to the 1st of July. Now, I've got to tell you, it's, it's such a good thing that you have drawn this card. 
Venus is as well, apart from the things that we talked about just a moment ago, is the most receptive uh, of planets for love, beauty and creativity. And Cancer is the most receptive of signs, which is about nurturing, comfort, support and healing. So we have receptive love and happy relationships and emotional exchanges. These are a very, very happy combination of planets and signs astrologically for me and for you in this thing. Now, I've got to say that there could well be marriage associated with um, this time or you'll hear about marriages. Um, it's, it foretells of the beginning of a harmonious relationship. Now, that doesn't just need to mean romantic relationship. It could be a personal friendship. It could be a business relationship. This is also, this is a very, very good card for people who are involved in retailing or in selling. Very good card. It speaks of close friendships and partnership. And... Um, and it, and it talks about a love which is both special and equal. You'll be able to give and receive love in equal measure. Um, I think it reminds you to that you do have a connection to spirit and its main quality is universal love. I'd have this... Uh, maybe make this suggestion. Pay attention to the love coming to you now. Remain open and let it enter you and go deep inside and have this thought in mind. There is nothing to do but enjoy what life offers. I am now ready to let into my life the love relationships and decent nurturing relationships that fulfill me. Because now is the time. Let's have a look at the Queen of Clubs. Now this could be someone that we were just speaking about earlier. This is for me a real card of charisma. This speaks of some, this could be you, because it's a very charismatic person. Uh, and it's a woman. It's very charismatic. Um, but face cards can be anybody, so it, it could well be male as well. It represents, but I'll talk about it as female. It represents a woman with power and authority, sociable, outgoing, friendly, charming, and graceful. Actually, not too different to what we saw here with, uh, with this Queen of Swords. I mean, very graceful, very elegant. Um, it's funny how these things, they all come around, don't they? Now, it can be a wife, a girlfriend, a sister, or a close personal friend. Um, but this is someone who is capable of actually giving good advice. And, and isn't that good? Because we do need to get good advice from time to time. I mean, there are plenty of people who will give us advice. The problem is, is getting someone who's going to give us good advice. And with her, you get good advice. Now, this Queen of Hearts is... Well, really, the goddess of love it can be an indicator of marriage or living together. Certainly, it's an indicator of somebody who's good. Well, I'll be frank, good in bed. And, and can, be, can also be a devoted mother. Well, devoted mothers can also be good in bed, of course. Um, or a pregnant woman. Um, but it can also represent coming across someone who's a very passionate lover and uh, and it can talk about um, romance uh, developing it can talk about romance developing it can sometimes talk about being swept off your feet by somebody so yeah there are some people out there who have the ability to sweep um, us off our feet and that is uh, this queen is one of those I've had a few of these queens in my life that have queens of hearts that have swept me off my feet. No, I'm a, I'm a sucker for a beautiful face, though. Now, the king of spades. This is a guy to keep an eye on. He can be a man of authority and leadership, 
who can, can actually be quite good for legal matters or for business. He can be sharp, witty and intelligent, but he can cause problems in relationships and partnerships, ventures, business deals and legal matters. He's someone who can, he can also be associated with uh, the law or with government. And um, generally, I don't have a lot of time for this King of Spades. He is a, a person who, although charming, although witty, although outwardly gracious, he carries a loaded gun in his jacket pocket and he's happy to shoot anybody if it serves his needs. Well, they're the types of things that we have coming up for you. And that is the way it is for you this month. Well, there you go. March underway. Well, let me just say this, is that you were fantastic during that reading and I really enjoyed providing it to you. I love providing these readings to you each month and, and subscribe and become part of the family and belong. And let me just say this, and I want you to remember this always, that you are a legend and I look forward to seeing you next month. Until then, bye for now. <laughs>